the next person that kind of was, you know, uh, spoken about and kind of called out was Boiler Room, right? Boiler Room had a bit of an incident where they've kind of had to justify their basically, where is it? I can find it. They've had to justify the grant that they got, right? That they received. And I think I can find it here. Ba, 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 ba. Where is it? It's Boiler Room statement, right? Let's go here. So, boiler room statement here from Twitter, um, basically explaining and giving a statement on what's basically happened regarding COVID and the grant that they received. So, let's kind of post it up on here. Boiler room has been awarded a grant as per the government's cultural recovery fund. Just hear what they have to say. Boiler room says the following: By connecting an emerging artists with global audience, boiler room helps artists grow their fan base and profile. Ultimately, in a vital part of driving the club and festival bookings within the UK and internationally. Like many others, boiler room is greatly affected by COVID, has eliminated our revenue from ticketed events, and has heavily impacted our areas of the business. An overall seventy percent of drop in revenue. We had to make the difficult decision to cut costs wherever we can, including redundancies across the whole company, losing people we care about deeply and who represent the very fabric of the brand. It continues. Boiler room's availability of boiler room so far has relied on the financial report so financial support sorry from investors alongside the revenue we generate from the brand partnership live events and apparel again the brand partnerships thing right uh the investors got them over a barrel over the recent years we have succeeded in reducing our reliance on the investors and building towards a completely sustainable business in the early 2020 before the pandemic hit we were close to this goal anticipate 2020 to be the first year that we would break even which is mad considering considering the amount of funding they've received over the years from brands ray-ban to red bull and all other under uh, underlings for them to only break even now shows there's obviously some kind of level of business incompetence there again this is talking for somebody that's on the business myself but i have to say that out loud and also goes to show just how difficult it is to run something like a boiler room and make it any way profitable especially when you consider the spaces that they use the level of artists they book but then that's also the issue they don't actually pay their DJs, which i didn't know right they actually just it's mostly a platform for promotion a good look for you to get your name out there which you could argue is definitely accurate i think but boiler room is basically a sympt a kind of symptom of the scene in general especially what we've seen with covid we all hoped covid would be the great equalizer it would allow small scrappy diy promoters to put on events and promote local artists instead of booking all the big acts when essentially it's just widened the gap between the i say my level the bottom level the and the middle level it's widened the gap right it's some people that even sit on the upper middle and obviously on the top tier it's just widen those gaps more and more because what's happened is that those same scrappy diy promoters aren't um, they don't want to take any chances, right? They're going to ensure that they put on an event that's going to sell. They don't want to be, um, they don't want to be liable for putting on an event, reduced capacity and not having tickets sell. So they're going to want to book people who are going to put bums in seats, you know, uh, as the phrase goes. So that's the problem. And Boiler Room is essentially the same sort of thing. Boiler Room probably would work for a certain level of DJ. It's definitely going to help your career. Um, you look at somebody like a Cheryl is a good example. You look at, um, what's her flipping name? The mixed race lady, um, Jada G. She's another good example. Both people who kind of profiles were ben benefited greatly from appearing on Boiler Room. Right, Cheryl obviously had that kind of viral moment where the other DJ kind of went and, and pulled back a tune that kind of raised up some really dumb and interesting debates around Around, you know uh around dj culture and misogynism and all that sort of shit and jada g just from being a stunning woman to look at and also being a very competent vinyl dj her appearance on deck mantle definitely helped to boost up her appeal um in terms of her bookings and her ability to make money i'm sure she's even said that in various interviews that i've read of hers so it definitely can help but i guess for most people the majority of acts it only works really for the top tiers in the middle if you're an entry-level person you look at some of the ra podcasts or streams that got a gap loaded some of the smaller guys rarely hit double figures in terms of thousands of views right no one really gives a shit no one's really going to kind of use that as a way for you to get more gigs you know if you don't have the right agent or the right book you know on the right agency or you don't have the right booking manager no one's going to give a shit about your career anyway for this so for uh, artists of that level to put themselves through that platform to play live on boiler room and not have anything come from it especially when they're not getting paid it's definitely going to hit you a lot difficult so it continues the statement goes as following to continue our work we applied for a grant 
and were awarded 791 and 600,000 pounds as part of the government cultural recovery fund. This fund was, was created to support cultural organizations and event businesses impacted by COVID-19. This grant will directly enable us to stay afloat, which is in turn allow us to continue to drive assets, uh, artists, drive artists' careers and help protect jobs and create freelance opportunities in 2021. That's the issue. If you get all these brand partnerships and deals, why are you not able to pay your staff? Why do you have to get grants if you're essentially being backed by some of the more bigger corporations, corporations that would initially would would in most senses you know look at you corporations that would in most cases be looked at as ways of selling out and now you're having to apply for government help in order to stay afloat it just doesn't make any sense especially when you don't pay artists that's the most important thing it continues over the past six months we've been working to create a club culture at large uh, recover to we, we, we've been we've been working to help club culture at large recover we diverted our funds from existing brand partnerships into supporting artists we awarded financial grants to 20 uh, music collectives around the world and we have found ways to compensate artists involved in streams over the period by raising funds and paying booking fees which they weren't doing previously which is a fucking crime they weren't paying artists prior like they weren't paying their standard rates that explains why they got so many good people to play on their platform if you got a free weekend and you've got some time in the day to go and play and you're in a city anyway of course you'd go and play at boiler room it makes complete sense i know if i was a booker on boiler room and i was working there i'd just be looking at all the listings all around the world and just be hitting up djs that are playing and make it and seeing if they're doing anything you know because usually most djs when they're, they're in their hotel room before their gig pre preparing their playlist but why not go and play on boiler room get some added eyes on your brand and then go straight from there straight to the club you've got some practice underneath your belt and you can go in a club um on on fleek do you know what i mean but you don't need to pay them so that's the really heinous point it continues here um we have found ways to compensate artists involved in streams by paying their booking fees as well as promoting a large number of charity initiatives we are working on clothing collections designed by djs which raise money for charitable causes and we have set up and coming projects that invest in some of the most vital music communities as a map uh, the tentative next steps for rebuilding our local scene uh, through these efforts we have been able to pay out a total of 250,000 artist fees financial grants and charitable fundraising that, that's the then again the other issue they have too is their founders in it both of their founders are like you know pretty posh well-to-do guys in london for the most part and of course they've always had a a bad time connecting with grassroots underground scene because people always look at them and others that's probably the same reason why i probably hate palace right they're sort of like sanitized version of chab culture which i've never actually experienced these sort of like upper upper middle class um tofty you know wankers from fucking fulham pretending like they're from the ends uh because they wear sovereign rings and wear loafers with their jogging bottoms right it's just it's kind of cosplay it's kind of larpy it's just annoying to look at so i'd assume for some people having to kind of do business with two very white very middle class very posh looking um kids um that are kind of purporting to be the voice of the underground is super hard it kind of is similar to like when i find out that um how do you pronounce their name is it in guzu in guzu or guzu in guzu that collective um or the festival that they do it out of from uganda it's essentially founded by two super white guys right has nothing to do with black culture whatsoever apart from them booking the artists which you know is very good in that regard but i'm assuming they obviously have a hard time um kind of they obviously have a hard time justifying their position in the scene based on what they look like. Now, again, boy room guys, they don't, it's not, it's not fair where they come from. Shouldn't be, um, shouldn't influence how people view the platform, but it is what it is. And it is part of the issue that they're having too. Um, whether or not I think it's fair is another thing. Cause I do think again, similar to RA, they've probably done a more good than bad for the, for the scene in general. They've provided a platform for various promoters and artists to basically take their career from nothing to something so i think that goes a long way but again i just think in this current climate where everyone's kind of pointing the blame at somebody for their um words that they're going through boiler room has unfairly been judged through that same prison now do they have faults and errors yes should they be um pulled up on it at every point in turn probably not but i think in general club culture isn't necessarily suffering from what boiler room has done it's suffering from what the governments in your country have done and decimating club culture apart from berlin no other government apart from berlin specifically no other government around the world has kind of gone out of their way to look after the nightlife industry in any way in any meaningful way and covid has made basically brought to light most of those issues that already exist in my opinion it could end here this grant is vital to continue this work and our mission of supporting club culture through events and broadcasts crucially it enables us to continue building providing direct revenue for for artists venues and communities which surround them we'd like to thank arts culture england and dcms for the grant and hope to see funding continue to be extended to the industry cool 
all well and good to be honest again i think burden probably is getting unfairly criticized for it the, i don't I, it's just the fact that they don't pay artists that's really really disgusting i think they have a lot to blame for that they have a lot to answer for that in that regard even prior i think artists you know allowing themselves to go on boardroom without the being sponsored especially when they have massive ray-ban logos all over the place is really really ridiculous but hey i guess you have to get it how you get it in it but i'd love to know your thoughts on them how what do you think do you think boardroom are in the right to get that sort of grant should they be giving it back and redistributing it to artists that actually need um do they provide a net positive are they in the wrong i'd love to know your opinion in the comments below please let me know